Hello and welcome to the next lecture in our R programming course as the part of our data science specialization series using R programming. Today's lecture is about the debugging tools that are built into R. So these come with R as they are not part of any package and they can be useful for kind of figuring out uh, what's wrong after you have discovered there's a problem, right? So how do you know that there's a problem? So there are a couple of indications that R will produce that will give you the sense that there's something wrong going on and this is roughly the gradient. And so I think I mentioned this before, but basically there are three main types of indications. The first is a message and a message is a very tame notification. It's just, it could be a diagnostic message that something happened, but it could be nothing. Okay. And so the message won't stop your function from executing. It will just print. There will be a message that gets printed to the screen and the execution of the function will continue. And that's all. The next level is the warning. All right. So the warning is another indication. Usually if you are writing a function, you are writing to figure out, okay, what's a message and what's a warning. Furthermore, if you are using a function and you are figuring out, uh, well, what does that mean? A warning is an indication that something unexpected happened. It's not necessarily a problem and many times you explicitly want to ignore warnings, but there's something unexpected happened. So the function was expecting one thing and it got something slightly different and it wasn't enough to kill the whole thing, but it was enough to kind of trigger this warning. So execution of the function will continue if a warning occurs, but you will get a message after the end. So once you will get a message when the function completes execution, so when the function come back, so when you get the console back, that's when the warning appears. So by default, you won't get a warning in the middle of the execution. So these, the messages are generated by the message function and a warning is generated by warning message. And then an error is the last stop, right? So an error is a fatal problem. This stops execution of the function and uh, error messages are produced by the stop function. And then there's a general notion of a condition. It's a higher level concept, which is uh, all three of these things are conditions. And so you can imagine that. Uh, and so you can create new conditions if you wanted to. And generally you are not going to be doing this at this level. But if you have another type of condition that you want to kind of trigger when something special happens. So it's not an error. It's not a warning and it's not a message. You can create your own conditions by using some of the functions that are available. So we won't be doing that now, but there is this notion of the condition and it's generic. So this is your basic warning, right? You take the log of a negative number. You can't do that, right? Now notice that uh, you get a value back. It's a NAN, right? Not a number. And but you also get this warning which occurred uh, after the execution of the function. And it just says that uh, in the log of minus one, NANs are produced, right? So this is typical and sometimes that's fine because maybe you are taking a log of a bunch of numbers and maybe some of them are negative, but you don't really care. And then you are going to make some sort of plot or something like that. So this is kind of thing where you probably wouldn't want the functions behavior to just stop. Anytime it sees a negative number because uh, sometimes uh, these things just happen. You get negative numbers on occasion and you want to take the log anyway. So that's a warning. Now I've got a little function here that I've created. It's very simple. It takes your input. It checks to see if it's greater than zero. And uh, if it's greater than zero, it prints a message saying X is greater than zero. And if it's less than or equal to zero, you get a message saying that uh, it's less than or equal to zero. So a very handy function I'm sure you will all be using soon. And then last, I want to mention this part here. So invisible is a function that stops or I should say prevents auto printing. So normally if I am at command line and I type a function, remember the end, I execute a function and the function will return the last element that's in its function body, right? So if the last sum in this function body is uh, let's say a numeric vector, it will return that numeric vector. Now what happens is that if you just execute the function that uh, numeric vector will be automatically printed to the console because it got returned by the function and R will use auto printing to just print that uh, to the console. If I call invisible on the return object, then it will still return the same object, but it won't do the auto printing. 
so you can call the function and the object will be returned but there won't be any auto printing so an example of a function like this is the load function so we haven't really used this that much but the load function loads object from a saved workspace so it's like the opposite of save right and when it loads uh, the objects uh, it actually returns a character vector containing the names of all the objects that it loads but that doesn't uh, get printed to the screen and because uh, it's returned invisibly okay so if you have a function that returns something invisibly then the return what happens is that the object that gets returned by that function doesn't get printed to the console and so sometimes you want that to happen and sometimes you don't sometimes it doesn't matter so here i've just added this here just so you know tell you about it it's not particularly important but actually i should say that uh, any print function here actually all print functions will return the string that it prints okay so when you say print x what gets returned is a string x right but uh, you don't actually see that because the return value is returned invisibly right so you could assign the output of print to an object but generally speaking you never do that so anyway that was a little diversion on invisible so here i create my print message function and i call print message 1 great no problem i get the message x is greater than 0 okay so what uh, does print message return just before i go on print message returns its argument all right and so actually if i had assigned print the output or print message to some other object it would be the number 1 in this case right even though it didn't print out the number one anyway so now i'm going to pass it directly an na right and uh, we are going to get an error here because you can't make the comparison if na is greater than zero it's not defined right and so it doesn't know what to do it can't move on and so it has to error out okay so you get an error saying that uh, in this expression you have a missing value where it was expecting true or false and instead it got na which is neither true nor false right okay so something happened there that's wrong now i am going to fix this problem so to speak i've got a new function print message 2 and the first thing we are going to do is uh, i'm going to check to see if the argument is na right so now if it's na i'm going to print this message right so it's not going to produce an error it's just going to print a different message so this function is going to print one of three messages for now and then it's going to return its argument invisibly. So now when I call this, uh, so now what is something that might typically happen? Well, I calculate the log of minus one and I assign it to x. So that doesn't stop anything. I just get a warning and I move on. All right. Now I'm going to call print message on x and I'm getting x as a missing value, right? So now there's no error there, but uh, it may be unexpected, right? Because well, the thing that I'm inputting into print message two is like uh, some positive number. So I thought I was going to get the message X is greater than zero, but instead I'm getting this message X is a missing value. So what happened? This is the thing where what you thought uh, you were going to get and where your expectation is different from actually kind of what the function produced, right? And so all I'm trying to say here is uh, how do you know when something's gone wrong, right? And sometimes uh, it's easy to tell like uh, in the case where you got the error message, but sometimes it's not easy to tell because uh, there's no error, but it's actually uh, what I was expecting. Okay. It's when you are looking at a function, you think something's gone wrong. There's a couple of questions you want to ask yourself to see whether there's something actually wrong or maybe there is something we call user error okay so the thing about uh, when you are kind of thinking about when you are debugging a function you want to answer all these questions as you are going through your process here so what was the input that you put what did you feed into that function means not what you thought you fed into that function what did you actually feed into that function Okay, so I thought uh, I fed that function a positive number, but in reality, I fed it a nan. All right, so how did you call the function? What were the arguments that you gave? Things like that, uh, what were you expecting? And this is important when you are asking someone for help or uh, you are asking someone a question. I can't just get it right. It's not that useful to say, oh, the print message to, to function didn't work. How do you know it didn't work? All right because uh, and then you say well i was expecting this but i got that okay 
that's how you know it doesn't work and then someone could say well you shouldn't have expected this because that's not what the function does or you know something like that but you can say okay here's the problem so what you were expecting is then very important to be able to articulate at least to yourself and maybe to other people what was the output that you were expecting were you expecting some message that you didn't get or other results other numerical results things like that so what we were expecting and then of course uh, what did you get how did what you actually get differ from what you were expecting and then of course uh, were the expectations correct in the first place so if you were expecting something that was in fact incorrect then your notion of what is correct and incorrect is now being challenged right so an important and another um, key aspect of debugging of course is you have to be able to reproduce the problem right because if you can never reproduce the problem you will never have a chance in figuring it uh, what went wrong because uh, it only happened that one time right so this is very 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 important and unless it's like the most basic problem and uh, i can't uh, even say what uh, that would be you have to be able to reproduce the problem you know because uh, you have to be able to show someone this is how i created the problem because most people are not going to know if you just show them the output of the error message or what that means or where it came from or uh, how you got there okay so the process by which you encounter the error or the problem is very important so you have to know how to reproduce the problem there are some problems and so when i was talking about uh, for example in random number generation you need to set the seed because it may be that only under a certain sequence of random numbers that a problem occur and if you are not setting the seed you will never be able to reproduce that problem because every time you run it it's going to be a different set of random numbers there are other types of problems that can be hard to reproduce because they are more complex for example if you are writing co-networking functions you are doing like parallel programming often those kinds of problems can be very hard to reproduce because they depend on activity in other machines and things like that you can't really reproduce that and if you are getting data over the internet and your code is the kind of interacting with things in the web then problems there can sometimes be hard to reproduce because servers on the other side may change or whatever and so you can't always freeze things in time if it's something that's just happening on your computer it's usually going to be easier to reproduce the problems so unless i mean only under very exotic circumstances it will be hard to reproduce a problem on your computer so that's it for today see you in the next lecture where we will continue on it and talk about few tools that you can use and we'll look into how to use these tools too so see you in the next lecture till then take care